Hello there. If you have been following my last two videos, we have been discussing the basics of signal processing, where we discussed the basics of signals, such as such as we discussed the various signal types, analog, digital, continuous time, discrete time. And then we looked at the pipeline of signal processing, which basically goes from analog continuous time signal all the way to digital discrete time signal. And most of the time that was spent in the last two videos was discussing the sampling. So if you haven't watched those videos, to summarize, it's basically sampling is basically you want to go from analog continuous time signal to analog discrete time signal. And we do that by defining the sample time and the rule of thumb is that we must sample at a rate greater than the nyquist rate in order to get a proper sampled signal if you need to know more details i would encourage you to watch the previous videos in this video i'm going to discuss the next step in the process so which is to convert the analog signal to a digital signal. As a refresher, analog signal is a signal that can take any values. So the amplitude can be any values without any restrictions. The, uh, the digital signal is different because here the values of the amplitude cannot be just any arbitrary number. So here the values are going to be some specific numbers that we're going to define. So what does this A to D or analog to digital conversion consists of? So that's what we're going to study in this uh, in the in the next uh, in in this video. So let's dive into it. All right. So here it is, analog to digital conversion. So in the black box, which we call A to D converter, what happens is two separate things. So one is we have the something called quantizer, and then we have something called a coder. So the quantizer basically is, oh, yeah, let's go to this slide. So what happens here is that we have the, from the sampling, we got this analog discrete time signal. And again, it is discrete time because we only define the value at a certain times. X analog because these spikes can actually take any value depending on what the in, what the original analog signal looked like. Now, we take this signal and pass it through a quantizer to convert it to digital discrete time signal. Now, what that means is, so, First, we need to define the uh, uh, different values. How many different values uh, should uh, should we define the signal by? So in this case, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are seven different values. So the amplitude here can only take one of these seven different values. So in order to ensure that, we take the signal that we get from the sampler so we got the analog discrete time signal which in this case is shown by the black lines then we quantize that signal the way we do that is we essentially clip off any value that is not aligned with the levels that uh, that we have defined so that's how we quantize the analog signal which was taking any possible values to now quantized signal which only takes the values that are defined by us so in this case these red bars so this is now a discrete signal and also it's a digital signal because it takes only certain values so now we have gone from analog discrete time signal to digital discrete time signal now now we need to start uh, we need to send this signal transmit this signal or, it, or or maybe process this signal we could do it the way it is right now 
but it's difficult because if let's say you have a large number of levels these are called levels so if you have large number of levels it's just not very practical to define a signal with many different levels because then it's not much different than the analog signal so in order to make our life easier what we do is coding we call it pulse coding so in the previous in in this example that we saw in the previous slide we defined seven different levels now those seven different levels can be can be defined by binary equivalent so we need at least three different binary digits to define seven different possible values of the signal so just so here this is these are different levels and then zero is in binary code zero zero and then one is one and then two is zero one zero and three is zero one one so just a basic translation from the uh, decimal to binary code now we have converted the signal which had seven different levels to a combination of uh, codes which are just a combination of zeros and ones so then in order to transmit this signal we we can represent this binary equivalent in the wave of, in, in the form of a pulse waveform so where uh, anything that's below this um, bar is considered zero anything that's above this is one again this is this is up to you how you want to define it but just for simplicity and logically how we are accustomed to think so anything above the bar is one anything below the bar is zero so then you know when we transmit this signal uh, this original signal which is quantized now so it's a digital signal when we transmit it we will transmit it as a three bits signal and then based on how the bits are flipped we can tell or the receiver can tell what that actual signal level is so this is called coding so if we go back to the box here a to d converter there are two things that happen so we first take the analog discrete time signal and then we convert that into digital discrete time signal by quantizing it and then finally because there are still many many levels in order to make our life easier we do something called pulse coding so that's done in a quarter and what we send out is the pulse code modulated signal this signal is really the digital discrete time signal so that's what the a to d converter does so just to summarize in this video we focused on a to d converter but where that fits in the bigger pipeline is here so we got the original signal analog continuous time and then we sampled that to analog discrete time and then we passed that through the a to d converter and what we get is analog discrete time signal which can be coded into a pulse waveform and that's what we can transmit on the electrical lines or process because now what we have is just a stream of zeros and ones so that's it for this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you